welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and today I thought we would be doing a different video and that is where I will be talking about my 10 facts about Firewave which is my ebook. Let's get going. So as you guys know from my last video I accidentally deleted everything. I was trying to, to delete. It's ironic. I was trying to delete that one video from last week, the February wrap up. That was the very video I wanted to delete from my camera. But it just somehow ended up deleting all of my files, all of my photos, and videos in the camera. So that's fine. So now I'm behind schedule. I'm re recording everything again. But um, yeah, so I got most of my photos back, which is good, but I'm kind of worried about my videos because those videos are also from last year when I went to Greece, and you won't ever get to see those videos now. I'm kicking myself in the butt, but um, maybe this summer will be good because I might be going to Italy with my sister, maybe, we don't know, it's all in talks. But it will be exciting if we did went to Italy. I want to see Michelangelo, I want to see Pablo, Leonardo da Vinci, all those famous people. I want to see them. See them as in, you know, their works. But I am really excited if that trip is happening and this time I won't delete it by accident. But um, yeah, as of now, I am re-recording everything and that's just how it is, unfortunately. So, let's get going. Now, starting off with number 10, my first fact is that Firewave was actually supposed to have a brother. So, unfortunately, that idea didn't really work out. I wasn't sure where I wanted to go with Ayana having a brother. It just, I had like no plans for him. So I wasn't sure if I wanted him to be a superhero or like an ordinary person. So I just kind of just dropped the idea because I had nothing to work with him. So our dear old Ayana is a loner and that's all she thinks she is a loner. Dun dun dun. Okay. But um, that's how it is. So I had no plans for her brother so I just had to drop him. Number 9, Iron City was supposed to be futuristic. So I had an idea about having like a futuristic city, but like as I was writing out the story and fleshing it out, it also didn't work because with the timeline, it just didn't really make sense. Like I kind of want to have like a futuristic, you know like how with Star Wars, Anakin and Obi-Wan with those flying cars. So that's the kind of idea I had in mind. But with the timeline of how Iron City is, it just didn't really make sense. So that's another idea that I had dropped down. This is actually my favorite fact and I also want to go on a trip to see it for myself. And that is at number 8. Number 8 and that is Iron City is based off Toronto, Canada. So please self explain it to me. I just got fascinated by Toronto. As someone who lives in Canada, I do want to see Toronto and all its glory, beauty and all, you know, so. Yeah, so I'm excited, so maybe that will happen one day and I get to see, <laughs> and I get to say, this is where I based my book from. <laughs> so, you know, just a Canadian thing. But in the seven, so still being with Toronto, um, the ghost tower that is in the book, is actually based off the CN Needle in Toronto. So I thought it was cool. I actually really like how the CN Needle looks like the CN Tower looks like. And so I'm like, oh, what if something haunted is happening in there? So I actually don't know if the CN Tower itself is haunted, but I just kind of played an idea around it. So that's why I came up with the ghost tower. I know, very original, but it works. Next. So we have, in my book, we have a museum where something happens. I'm not telling you what it is. You have to read it. The links are down below if you are interested. But, so the Museum of Iron City is also based on the Royal Ontario Museum. 
So I really like how the uh, Royal Italian Museum really looks like. I thought it was cool looking. So I did got inspired by my Iron City Museum of Royal Ontario because I thought it was really cool. I really liked the structure and the design of that museum. So um, yeah. Number 5. So this is like a spoiler. If you haven't read Fire Life, this is a spoiler so feel free to skip. But um, so number 5 is Fire Life was actually not supposed to have a sister. So kind of the same thing with the brother, um, except it's a little opposite of that. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to write all the ideas for my bad guy, which is called Obsidia. And I just wanted to write who she is, what she is, why is she hunting down Firewave, why is she, you know, being the baddie and all that. So which is funny because I thought it wouldn't work out for Obsidia being the sister, but it actually did work out. Like, as I continued to write my story, it actually did work out. I was also writing the backstory of Ayana as well, so that just somehow flew in to the story and it just worked out. Four, so this might be an interesting one, but that is Obsidian was never supposed to be an alien. She was just supposed to be like your regular baddie villain like how we see in multiple superhero movies, but I mean she did came from another planet, so I thought it would be cool to make her an alien in the end. So but yeah, like it's supposed to be like that Typical villain good versus evil kind of thing, but um, and it just worked out that way in the end, so why not? If it works, it ain't stupid. Number three, so I planned this trilogy, Wild Hours in Greece. So, so by the way, when I was planning my story in Greece, I knew it was going to be a trilogy, and I also knew how each book was going to end. So I, I was like really, really happy about it. I was just like envisioning how it's going to end. I'm like, yes, that's the, that's the ending for each of the book. So I'm excited about them. I'm really liking it how it the end. And also in the sequel, um, it, it actually supposed to have a different name, which is right now it's called Firebird, which is also out. So if you are interested in reading a sequel, but obviously you do need to read the first one, otherwise you'll be a little bit confused for the sequel. Because in the first book I actually explain who Obsidian is, what she is, and all that stuff. So you will miss major points if you do not read the Fire Wave, which is the first book. But anyways, so Fire Burns was supposed to have another sequel, another name. It was like Oh man, do I even remember? I actually don't even remember what it's supposed to be about. Oh my god. Okay, well, that just flew out of my head, but as I said before, Firebird's supposed to have another name. I just can't remember what it is. Ah, okay, but anyways. The two, it actually took me three months to write Firewave, which is the first book. However, that doesn't mean I had completed Firewave, like, completed as in published and make announcements all that. There was a lot of editing in it, there was a lot of revising and just me reading again the whole thing and adding more stuff in, adding more stuff out. So even though it took me three months, I still had extra months added because, you know, of all the editing, revising and all that stuff. And number one. So, I actually read reviews from my readers. I do give out copies to my readers if they are interested in reading. You know, copies as an ARC, which is Advanced Readers Copy, if you don't know, and they are really valuable to authors so that they can be build credibility and, you know, they used to come in early before the publishing date, so that's what an arc is, and it's really important for us. But basically, for my, for my number one, um, after reading the reviews, I was like, kind of disappointed, just because no one was able to guess about Ayana, 
And now is the whole idea of it. So I did leave somewhat hints of my hand throughout the book. But like the whole point of me not sharing the backstory was I wanted the readers to guess Ayana as to who, what she is. And so that didn't really happen. It kind of backfired, but everything will be explained in my third and final book, which is crazy to think about. I didn't think I would reach to that point in all honesty, because when I was writing Fire Wave, I did lost a little bit of inspiration. I was just like, this book is not going anywhere, I don't know what to write, so I did lose a little bit of inspiration, but I'm happy I kept going, because I knew eventually it will be paid off, so yeah. Also, I do want to make a bonus point, an honorable mention. And that's about Obsidian. I also knew exactly what she's gonna have powers with. I thought, which is about Obsidian, I took the name from Obsidian. And so, you know, I kind of played around with the words, and now we have Obsidian. And she has some powers, you know, Obsidian powers, like anything volcano based is what her powers are technically on. Okay. So those are my 10 facts about Fire Wave. Let me know which fact is the most interesting and which one more, you get more amazed by one. So please like, comment, and subscribe so that you'll be notified every time I post. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye!